Good morning. You're welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. Tinubu to present 2024 budget on Wednesday. And lawmakers push for 32 new federal varsities. That's the top trending. Uh, well, actually, uh, the hot topics. That's for, a hot topic, sorry. <laughs> yeah, for, and for we'll today. move to the top trending. Yeah. Okay, so uh, my name is Nyamgul Agadji. I'd like to welcome you to today's edition of uh, The Breakfast. Um, today is the 28th day of November? Yes. And uh, if I remember well, 30 days of September, April, June, and November, all the rest of 30 days. <laughs> you're laughing. You remember that? I okay, know. that means that we have just two more days to the end of November. And voila, we're in is here. December. The you know. holidays. Yes, we saw some uh, uh, companies lighting their, their streets and their, their offices. Oh, the Christmas lights are already out. So, if the Christmas lights are out, you know that uh, Christmas is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whatever you need to do for Christmas, you do. Well, now is the time to go and get your Christmas clothes. Yeah, but, but you know it's not my birthday. It's Jesus' birthday. I'll be <laughs> in church <laughs> to say happy birthday to Jesus. Well, I there's will, that. Everybody who's looking I, I, up to I think me. I still want my Christmas. I, I wish I was still a kid. Mm. I remember when they would buy Christmas clothes and shoes, and you're so excited. I would try them on like every single day before Christmas because yeah. I cannot wait to wear them on Christmas Day. I know how many how many, how many children were spanked because of that. You, they mm. buy you Christmas shoes, uh, maybe two weeks to the Christmas, and you you're begin to try them yeah. so much, and you're like, oh, of you want to spoil them before the Christmas <laughs> Day? <laughs> and you're spanked and all that. I know. But it was fun, you know, just growing up was fun. Mm -hmm. But right now, as an adult, someone comes to you and just suddenly asks you, what do you want for Christmas? That's a you, very good question. You'll be, mm, uh, mm. No, I have a list. <laughs> really? A list? I'll have a list for you. What do I want? Oh, please. Can we talk about houses and cars and Houses shoes? for Christmas? Uh, uh, why not? You have to Were you aim, the one who was born on higher. Christmas? Were you the one who was uh, born uh, on Christmas? I'm Jesus' child, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're so glad that you're here today. We have uh, top trending yes. issues. You might just want to take the top trending. Okay, so for our top trending, we have a few stories for you. The first one is gunmen killed two Nigerian policemen, um, one civilian in Imo State. Gunmen have struck again in Imo State, killing two Nigerian policemen and a civilian at Ahira Junction in the Hahiazu Mbise local government area of the state. The attack came on Monday at the time. The new commissioner of the police in the state, Danjuma Abuki, was in the area on a morale-boosting visit to his officers in the Mbise general area. The attackers opened fire on the officers who were in uniform in the area, killing them instantly, while another civilian who was a passerby was hit by a stray bullet. The spokesperson for the police in the state, N. Henry Okoye, said that the commander declared a manhunt for the fleeing suspects. He said the Commissioner of Police in Imo State Command, CP Aboki Danjuman, Commander 34 Artillery Brigade, and Joint Task Force operatives are combining, are combining rather, the scene of the crime for evidence that will possibly lead to the arrest of hoodlums responsible for the attack and killing and the killing of two policemen at the Hahira Junction in Hahiazu in Bisei local government area of Imo State. Only on Saturday evening, the lifeless body of a traditional ruler of Utulu Autonomous Community in the neighboring Ehinze Hite Mbise local government area, Eze, Joe Utulu, was found dead at the neighboring Abo Mbise local government area. The monarch had been kidnapped from his palace on Saturday morning. Also, a few days earlier, the war chairman of the People's Democratic Party in the Ife Akodim. Chokonze Ward in the Heizin Hite Mbise local government area of the state, Chiedoziem Anyawu, was assassinated in the presence of his wife. On arrival, his killers demanded to see him and immediately shot him repeatedly as soon as they confirmed he was the one they were looking for. It, it's, so, it's so sad. sad. Story. It's as if we're having parallel governments. The bandits are running their own country within mm -hmm. the country, and then we are running ours. And to imagine the kind of confidence, it's, it's, it, it was timed to coincide with when the police chief was in the area yes. to show that, yes, you cannot do anything. You mm -hmm. look him in the eyes and say you can't do anything. And then they shot uh, two policemen 
And then most, most unfortunate is the fact that uh, a passerby, a civilian mm -hmm. who had nothing to do, even the police didn't have anything, anything to do to anyway, do but yeah. this one also, I wonder where he was going to, and then he it got shot. It's so, it's so, uh, all the areas you're mentioning are areas I have been to. Mm -hmm. I, I have friends in Imo State, and they mm -hmm. happen to come from that area, and mm -hmm. it's so scary, it's, it feels like I'm hearing stories from home mm. and how the Ezinite that they're talking about, the Ahira Junction, the uh, Abombise and all that, those are the areas I visit anytime I'm going to Imo State. So it feels like something really tragic has happened back home. But Nigeria is home. Any part of Nigeria is home. So if something happens like this, you, you can't but just feel for the people yeah. who are there and think about how Nigeria has deteriorated into so a much. state of chaos. Yeah. You can hear. 10 or let's say 20 years ago, nobody ever believed you could hear a bomb blast mm -hmm. in, in Nigeria. You could hear gunshots anyhow in Nigeria. You couldn't. We had the times of Anini, the arm robber, mm -hmm. uh, the, so many but other names. But then it names. was robbery. But just Not robbery. Bandits and gunmen and um, Boko Haram and all of, like, there's so much insurgence that has taken Assassination, over. because like this chief, you know, they came, asked, identified yeah. him in and immediately shot, shot him. It means that they were expressly either Lucy, sent yes. or he was just a target because of one or two things. And when they were sure done. that he was the one, that was when they shot. So they did mm -hmm. not even want to look for someone else and shoot the wrong person. Mm -hmm. It had to be that person. So it wasn't a robbery. It wasn't anything. No. It was a targeted assassination. And it's been happening all the time. What's happening in the East is really sad because we are hearing so many stories um, on own gunmen. In fact, people cannot go home. I'm sure like this is Christmas. Usually people who are from the East, they love to go home during the mm -hmm. holiday season. They love to, you know, have parties. They see it as a reunion basically. But now with all of this, you can't even go home. There are people, I have a friend who was supposed to go bury her dad in the East, but she's like, I don't, I don't want any of my friends to come because I cannot guarantee your safety. Mm -hmm. I cannot guarantee that you will be secured when you're there because there's a lot of things happening. And it's quite sad. It's, it's heart-wrenching. This same emo is when, where I was telling the story the other day that mm. five members of my family were kidnapped. kidnapped. Uh, they were going back to uh, Abia State from a, wedding, um, uh, a burial that they went to in emo State. And they were kidnapped, five of them. And they were asking us, they were quite cheap, you know. They were asking for 50 million. Wow, that's quite <laughs> cheap. <laughs> but for five people, you know. My question where is, am I where going to, <laughs> where am I going to cover? <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was terrible because at that same point, you know, we, we had just lost my sister. My elder sister had just died. So we were trying to, you know, put some things together to mm. make sure that we did the burial. And then they kidnapped five people. And we're asking for 50 million. Do you know the worst part of this is the fact that even sometimes... When they ask you for this money, it doesn't guarantee that that person it's is not, coming back to you. A lot of people... Most times, they still kill these people. Even so the person carrying the, money, the ransom money sometimes is being killed. It's being killed as well. So they take the money and they still kill these people. Why? And so we don't <sighs> That's know. That's really we're, sad. We're, we're, we're stuck between the, the devil and the deep, deep blue, blue sea. sea. Some people will say, do not negotiate with bandits because... The terrorists. Uh, they, or terrorists and all that. Some would say, negotiate because there's a possibility you might save a life. But mm. we have lost so many lives that if we had from the onset taken a decisive action, uh, maybe now things like this wouldn't be happening. I remember when, was it Mikel Obi or one of the footballers, uh, what, the father was kidnapped mm. and he said in one of his interviews that his boss, I think a, um, the owner of Chelsea then, mm. that is uh, Ukrainian, is a Russian. So he said, well, uh, your father has been kidnapped. If you want me to send some people, I could do that. And in a matter of days, they will be out. Which means it, even people who are not from Nigeria know yeah. how to get yeah. to these people and rescue we had a case of americans being rescued the nation we import a lot of things mm. and the only way you can grow your your revenue is for you to export out of the country because that way you are trading with all these other countries mm -hmm. now what are you doing you're importing so every money that you get you it, are spending it, it remains there do you yeah. understand but meanwhile there. you can actually use it because we were kind of focused on oil um, Only oil, don't even mention another yeah. one, just oil. Well, meanwhile, we can be focused on 
agriculture. We there have, there was not? a time. There was, there was a time that um, cocoa was the in thing in yes. Nigeria, and then there was also a time where palm oil mm -hmm. was also the in thing, and then we abandoned that. In fact, Malaysia had to come, come to here. Nigeria to, to learn. To learn. And now they're the biggest. Yeah. So, so you can see, we 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 lack the spirit we of diversification. For, yeah, we take things for granted, like the resources that has been given to us by God. Um, because I always say Nigeria is a very blessed country. We don't have. I think we are too blessed, so we take yeah, it for granted. We don't have natural disasters. There's nothing like we don't. The only issue is sometimes okay. Um, the economic realities and maybe we don't have enough policies by the government to be able to enable us to have you know a good livelihood however you there's no natural disaster our soil is good we have a warm weather all round everything is we're blessed mm -hmm. and we need to start thinking of how to use those resources that we have to be able to get in more things into our country yeah well when you talked about natural disasters i remember that that's so so few and far apart that at one point in Benue State a few months ago, when a thunder or lightning mm -hmm. killed two people or killed a man and his family, mm. uh, the community felt it was his old father that was <laughs> responsible. And they buried this man and the friend alive. Whoa. So it tells you they are not used to this kind of yeah. things. They are attributing it to supernatural forces mm. that are not supposed to be wicked witches and all mm. that and all that. Because if, if the, yeah, if these things were common in Nigeria, they would understand that they happen. Mm -hmm. But because it's not common, they are still yeah, thinking it's witchcraft. Of Katrina, or um, all this. They never see something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's take the final top trending story. Israel and mass extend truce in Gaza for two days. The four-day truce between Israel and Hamas in Gaza has been extended for another two days amid commendations of the released hostages from both sides. According to a report, Qatar disclosed this, adding that the Hamas said the extension was under the same conditions, which were for 50 Israeli hostages to be released in exchange for 150 Palestinian prisoners. Meanwhile, Israel has yet to affirm this, but has asserted that there would be a day's pause in the fighting for every 10 Israeli hostages released. This came as both sides prepared for the final exchange under the initial deal that took effect on Friday. 11 Israeli women and children held in Gaza and 33 Palestinian women and teenagers in Israel jails are expected to be released. Hamas, which is regarded as a terrorist organization by Israel, has freed 39 Israelis over the Three, over the previous three days, in exchange, Israel has freed 117 Palestinian prisoners. 19 foreign national, uh, nationals, one of whom Israel, Israeli citizenship, has also been handed over Hamas under separate agreements. The cessation of the fighting has also allowed a tremendous rise in deliveries of aid to Gaza, where there is deepening humanitarian crisis. Before the extension was announced, a Palestinian official told the, um, one of the biggest news um, agencies between 20 and 40 additional Israelis hostages could be freed by Hamas. An Israeli official, meanwhile, said that 184 people remained in captivity in Gaza, including 14 foreign nationals and 80 Israelis with dual citizenship. Israel launched a military campaign in Gaza and imposed a siege in response to an unprecedented cross-border attack by a mass gunman in which killed at least 1,200 people were, were also killed and about 240 people were taken hostage. Gaza's Hamas-run government says more than 14,800 people have been killed in the territory since the war began. Um. Well, we thank God that at least small, small gains are being made by yeah. the people who are negotiating and we hope for peace because if this war continues, uh, it might divide the world into two uh, parts. Uh, mm -hmm. One will be for Palestinians because there will be mostly Muslim countries yeah. and then the other ones for, for Israel. Israel. Israel is not even Christian, by the way. But, they practice uh, Judaism. Yeah, so, but, but that is how the world will be divided because most Christians, even though they know that Israel's Israel doesn't practice Christianity. They, they just feel it's God's own, own Yeah, that is how it is. So I just pray that there will be peace. 
But I keep asking myself the question, if a country, a neighboring country, just unprovoked mm. attacks us the way Hamas attacked Israel, how prepared are we as Nigeria to fend off I just this had, attack? I just had goosebumps. I, I, I wish I wasn't wearing I just had <laughs> goosebumps because like that is scary it's, it's very scary are we prepared for because this world is getting crazy individuals and and groups are getting crazy yeah. and crazier and crazier what if it happens to nigeria are we are we prepared Can enough we defend yeah. nigeria uh, that's a question that the people who need to listen uh, should listen to and see what they can do it goes beyond just buying uh, guns to, to mm -hmm. shoot. There mm -hmm. are a lot of things when you're talking about security, but hey, we're not the experts, but we do hope that everything is put in place, uh, everything beyond just money and buying a lot of things. Our defense, mm -hmm. our defense has been taking like the greatest chunk of our budget. Mm -hmm. Still, we're not seeing anything. About, yeah. So uh, something else, maybe another approach should be used mm -hmm. and less find a Nigeria that is more secure. But I, I, what, one thing I want to say is war is never the option. Never. never. At the end of the day, we'll never come back the to the table. Yes. The same table we should have just yes. sat at. And, and negotiate. Like, even if there's an issue, we can always negotiate. Like, I feel like with the Hamas, Gaza, it shouldn't have happened in the first place. Like, why? Even if you felt some type of way, talk about it. Mm -hmm. Even in our daily lives, if you have an issue with a friend, a brother, a colleague, Talk about it. You don't have to, you know, go through grievous means to hurt them. So war is never an option. So let's not war even with ourselves. And mm -hmm. uh, that is how we are going to end this segment and take a short break. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Stay with us.